Christmas, my husband bought me this. 12 hole lock arena. If you've seen this video, then you might know that up till now, my only experience with ocarinas has been with this. It's got four holes and it's a strawberry. Up till now, I've not been in a mad hurry to learn how to play a 12 hole ocarina. I mean, it's got 12 holes and that sounds like a lot of holes to learn how to play. But now I have one and in the spirit of YouTube, I thought I would give myself one hour to see how much 12 hole ocarina I can learn. It's midday, so I'd better get started. Happily, the ocarina comes with a thank you card and an ocarina fingering chart. So I think the main aim for my hour has got to be to learn how to play a scale from memory. Looking at the chart, I'm surprised there isn't as big a range of notes for the ocarina as I thought there would be. I thought with 12 holes there would be quite a range, um, but there isn't. It just goes C to F. I'm already off to a bad start. I assumed that you would have to cover all of the holes to get the lowest note, but apparently you leave these two small ones uncovered. What I'm working with here is this amount of holes on the front and on the back there's the labium and two thumb holes. Right, okay so for C it's everything but the two small holes. So to start with, for the first four notes, it's one right hand finger up at a time, but then we leave the, this little finger on the left hand down. Uh, just looking at the chart again, and apparently for the CD, for the E, you take both thumbs off. Well, I didn't do that a minute ago and it sounded roughly okay. That's definitely not right. So what I've discovered here is that the fingering chart um, has some mistakes in it. Is it acceptable to have an incorrect fingering chart with your brand new instrument? No, it is not. OF, pull your socks up. I could probably just about play it by memory. Let's find out. Nearly. So at the moment, from a recorder player's perspective, it's strange that the left hand little finger has so much to do, is so involved because on the recorder it doesn't do anything, and from a flute player's perspective it's usually the right hand little finger that stays down for most of the notes. So it's a bit of a brain jam to have to leave your left hand little finger down. One thing that I don't like about the fingering chart, apart from the mistake, um, this is an ocarina in C, it says C on it, um, but you do get lower notes by covering both of these smaller holes, so I don't know why they aren't shown on the fingering chart. I'm pretty sure that's trying to be the A and the B below the C, and that's really useful to have, so why wouldn't you show it on the chart? If you don't want to bother committing the fingerings to memory straight away, there are some songs included in the little leaflet and they have the fingering diagrams over each note so that you don't need to memorise what note you're playing um, because it shows you what to do. One 
one thing I am finding quite difficult is just moving this finger whilst leaving the little finger down. Evolution hasn't been kind to humans in that respect. <laughs> This is actually really disappointing. The ocarina itself feels really quite nice quality. It all seems quite nicely made, it feels nice to hold. It comes with a really good quality feeling protective case and then it's just completely let down by stupid mistakes in a fingering chart. I think my plan is just to continue running through that C major scale until it's really comfortable and under my fingers. It's not going to be an exciting video, so I'll probably do it in some sort of time lapse. At the minute, I'm struggling to judge whether the ocarina is a little out of tune or whether that's just down to my lack of breath skill. I also think the top three notes sound quite weak. So the top note, the top F is everything open. It sounds much better when you give it a lot more fast air. This thing actually takes a surprising amount of breath, so I'm gonna have to sort breathing out a little bit. Way through the time. I feel kind of comfortable with the scale, so I think we probably need a goal at the end of the hour. I want to choose a really short, simple piece of music and to be able to play it without having to look at the fingering chart by the end of the hour. Let's go find some music books. I've got a selection of my recorder and flute books and hopefully I'll be able to find a suitable beginner's basic, basic beginner's tune somewhere in here. I've been having a look for something that fits into the range of the ocarina, something that isn't too long or complicated so that I have half a chance of playing it, something that isn't in a horrible key signature so that I don't have to learn too many sharps and flats, and something that isn't going to get this video copyright claimed. And I think I have found all of those things in the Baroque Recorder Anthology Volume 1. This piece is only really short and it is called Don't You Tickle. This is apparently taken from The Complete Tutor for the Flute, published in 1750. This is only a few bars long and it's in G major, so all I need to do is conquer an F sharp. And I haven't played this before either, so that's nice. So the first three notes are G, G, and then the D above that, so that's quite a jump for such a new ocarina player. sharp. Apparently an F sharp is that. This looks like it's going to be a really lovely ergonomic shape to hold, but it feels a little bit clunky. I don't know if it's because it's ceramic and that just psychologically makes me scared of dropping it. Um, so I don't know if I've got a sort of death grip on the ocarina. I think it's something I'll probably get used to. That's the first bar. If you don't articulate really clearly, it has got a bit of a habit of sounding like one of those um, whistling kettles coming up to the boil. Do you hear that kettle? 
So I think it's lots of air, lots of fast air. Making sure your fingers go back in the right places, Lauren. I've chosen well with my piece of music. There's lots of stepwise movement in this, so it's just a finger up and down at a time. Cool, you can't see the clock, can you? I've got a couple more bars further in and I've hit a bit of a, a rough patch. Um, there's a run of quavers. For the D I've had to take my thumb away and then for the C I need to get it back on and I don't think I've managed to get it once in the right place totally covering the hole yet so the C at the start of the little quavers always sounds really wispy and horrible and out of tune. I can hear lots of air escaping because I'm not getting my fingers back where they need to be. It's just the thumbs. I'm struggling to get the thumbs back in the right place. to the F sharp is E to the F sharp um, is a little bit of a tricky movement because well I don't know why it is it just feels like it is that's an E and then you just need to swap those two fingers for that <sighs> can't even do it when I'm trying to show you slowly One and a half minutes left until the hour is up. How dramatic. The way I see it, I might as well spend the last minute just enjoying a drink because it's not going to get much better than it is with one more minute to go. How much ocarina can you learn in an hour? Not a lot. It's performance time. That would have been much more dramatic if I'd have set an alarm or something, but I didn't and here we are, it is performance time! <laughs> How much ocarina could I learn in an hour? Getting rid of the fingering chart which is practically useless anyway and we're going to see if I can make it through 16 bars of very simple music.
we go. Really, I think the main thing I can take away from my one hour of 12 hole ocarina is that it is not as complicated as I thought it would be to play a 12 hole ocarina. The first few notes are easy because it's just a finger up at a time, then after that it's just remembering to leave the little finger down and pick up everything else in sequence. You go on to your, to your thumbs after that until finally you take off everything. I feel like I've been on a bit of a downer about this ocarina throughout the video. I've called it a whistling kettle, I've said it's uncomfortable to hold, I've said I'm not sure how well in tune it is. Um, I feel like the tuning has definitely picked up as I've started to give more air. Um, but actually it's a really nice thing to have and I do really like the sound of it. I was accusing it of sounding it sounding like a kettle but there's nothing wrong with airy sounding instruments, it just depends what effect you like and actually I really like how strongly you can use your articulation. Um, I've been tonguing some of the notes really strongly to get them to speak well and if you did that on the recorder they would split or you'd get a weird sort of, I don't know, clunk sound at the start but on this you can really go for it which makes a nice change. some quite nice breathy airy trills as well which I like. Also what I haven't shown you is <laughs> the best bit it comes this particular ocarina anyway comes with um, a neck strap I did mention in the video that I was kind of worried about dropping the ocarina because it's ceramic I didn't want to break it but if you so desire there is a lovely um, strap that you can use to make sure you don't drop it and probably to start with that might actually be pretty good so that you can relinquish your death grip on the instrument and feel a bit more relaxed whilst playing it. Will I carry on playing the 12 hole ocarina? Definitely yes, I want to get the um, accidentals memorised under my fingers. What about you? Do you play the ocarina? I know a lot of you are recorder and flute players so it seems not too big a jump to imagine that there's plenty of other folk out there with ocarinas in their wind collection. If you do play, please let me know what I'm doing wrong. Um, I feel tension and a bit of pain down this side of my hand, so I'm thinking there's something in my posture that I haven't quite got sorted. Um, is this supposed to be a straight out in front of you kind of thing? Do you tilt slightly? please let me know. If you would like to have a better look or find out more about this particular ocarina, with any amount of luck I should have been able to put a link to it down in the video description. If you've enjoyed the video please do give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. I make videos every week about some wind instrument or other, usually the recorder, and I will be back again next week. Thank you so much for watching, see you again next time, bye!